You say I have nice hair. I got a haircut today. I did get a haircut today. I wonder if that's made a difference. I hope it has. I got a haircut before going to or getting ready to go to Sweden tomorrow. Swatted? No, I've not. I've not been swatted yet. I'm not going to waste any time here, by the way, guys, because I have to do an AMA in one hour twenty-two minutes, so we need to get this rolling. But anyway, Coralex, welcome to the stream. Appreciate the sub. Fresh cut. It is very fresh. Very fresh. It is fresh off the press today. Anyway, I'm going to try and go into VOD review mode real quick, just for about 1 hour and 20 minutes, 1 hour 15 minutes maybe, and watch two series. First of all, Flipside versus Leftovers. Um, it's pretty weird. I usually get a, a bit more time to kind of settle into streaming, but this is live. Go. We're just going to get straight into it. What is this bad panda thing about the chat? It's a website. I'd encourage you to check it out. I'm involved in it. Very uh, excited about that site. F3 fanboy, but still love you. Well, I mean, when I joined as F3's manager right after season one, I really just wanted Marky and Cux to win a world championship because I felt like they deserved it. They had been the best players in the world since the beginning of the game. Or uh, get it coming out. And I really wanted them to win a championship, and then they did. So after they did that, you know, we need to think of new goals. And <laughs> I guess, well, let's win another one, but it didn't go too well. Second try. King Spectre, thanks for the 100 bits. Appreciate it, appreciate it as always. Also, Rev Box Cap for the seven months. Welcome back to you. And anyway, let's let's focus on the gameplay. Not much happened here. It's a bit of feely out stage at the first minute for this game. Nobody really trying to slow the ball down in defense. But it's towards the latter end of this series that this um, that this gets very interesting, and I'm sure you guys mostly know what happens, but wonder how did it happen. I do like that passing play from Greasy and Marky. Um, it was a kind of pass that Flipside do more than any other team. I really feel like Flipside could have used the backboard better in uh, this season. Oh, let me just turn off my phone. That was my phone, by the way. In case you're wondering. I'm trying to unlock it so I can turn off the volume. Oh my goodness. It's not recognizing my thumb, apparently. There we go. Nope. Nope. Still. Okay, I'll do the unlock code. How do I mute this? Alright, there we go. Sorry about that. If somebody got confused, thought that was their phone. But like I was saying, I think Flipside could use the backboard more this season. I feel like they were over-reliant on those infield passes, which, if you do it too often, they become a little bit predictable and people just start sitting at the front post and getting ready to intercept that on the ground. How many VOD reviews today? Just two, just this one and one more. Greasy did quite well there to reach that very, very high uh, center ball by Snasky. He was trying, Snasky did well, he's trying to hit the ceiling where it curves. It would have been interesting to see what would happen if Snasky just faked a high cross and actually shot that ball low because it's very awkward sometimes to come off the wall and make a save on the ground in your own net. It's easy to get a bad clear, sometimes even miss the save entirely in that situation. Wilson Shine, welcome back. Tell Chop to give uh, give you his heat wave. You mean my heat wave? Oh, I did, you did say your heat wave. <laughs> I don't know if you will. Not sure about that. Is the voice saying anything today? I didn't hear anything there. I don't know why. I'm not sure if the text speech is working. Welcome back, by the way, Science Bishes as well. Appreciate the five months. And also Kayak, Kayak Urban 7, welcome to the stream. Again, uh, I'll reiterate, there was not a lot happened in the first game here. Not a lot of note. It was Leftover is trying to do what they always do, and that is frustrate the other team into um, awkward positions. Leftovers are very, very good at rotating in defense, not getting in each other's way. And although I do feel like they leave themselves exposed to backboard plays, they're exceptionally good at intercepting passes and the low crosses that Flipside tried to do. They, they, they really shut down Flipside in that regard. And really just won the aerial battle throughout the series as well. I remember in the venue, all of you guys who were at RLCS and able to hear the the bass in the venue, when we're, whenever you're on player cam like this and somebody just front flips, it sounds amazing in the, in the video. I think Farquhar, or I think Pharaoh is missing that. 
Marky, of course, didn't expect the miss, so he just uh, went for it, took the ball sideways. Which looks a little bit strange. Marky doesn't hold ball cam. Yes, he does, actually. Good pass by Marky, but leftovers probably more than any other team don't feel the need to challenge every ball. And look at that clear by Siki. Pay attention to that exact clear that Siki just made. It's probably his strongest asset. His ability to just be ready for almost anything that comes at him in uh, defense on the back wall. It's a very good shot. This almost certainly caught um, Kuxer off guard. He did not expect the speed and I'm sure he did not expect Siki to be able to angle that one to the bottom right corner or bottom left corner as Siki was looking at it. But I think of the new Gale Force setup, I think they're looking pretty good. It'll be very interesting to see how they can do at DreamHack this weekend. At Johnny about what went wrong, you mean for flip side? Uh, I'm going to discuss that in more depth um, as the series progresses. But what an own goal by Snasky. Pretty hilarious. Of course, it had to be Marky that gets the credit. He always gets credited with the worst goals imaginable. This is one of them. How do you convince your parents to let you use Discord? Why are your parents not letting you use Discord is what I need to know. If you want me to convince them, I need to know why they don't want you to use it. It's worth noting, anybody who does want to go and put a question in that AMA uh, on the Route Rocket League Discord, if you want to ask me a question, then you need to make a, uh, an account or get on the server with an account for 10 minutes. It doesn't let you post until 10 minutes after you've joined the server. Thoughts on what Neat Mike said about Greasy? I didn't hear anything that he said about Greasy. Hey Ashley, welcome back. Appreciate the seven months. I think that the text-to-speech isn't working today for some reason. Can you guys hear it? I can't hear te the text-to-speech guy. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he is working for you guys either. Oh. Marky actually does quite a lot of disruption. Jacob-style plays in offense this uh, first game. Just waiting upfield and... It looks like he's saving and clearing the ball, but what he's trying to do is just take it away from a defender who's probably jumping for it, like Farah did for the previous ball. It just so happened that Farah was able to continue with his trajectory and reach the ball. Hux in a pretty awkward position there. Great first touch, though. I would have loved to see Kuxer volley that ball. Take, it, um, take a touch and then volley it. Are all the cars in Rocket League the same? They're different hitboxes so marginally. I want to see what's going on if somebody isn't who isn't sticky right now, but there you go, Kuxer. Does well. This is pretty similar to his goal that won the World Championship. Kuxer uses the side wall, and then he uses the back wall, and then he follows up on it. Just dunks on Pharah. Really well done. Yeah, Kuxer likes to do that sometimes. He just hits the ball hard into the sidewall and looks to follow up himself. He's, he passes it to himself off the sidewall. Do I do I have a discard? Yes, I have a discard. I think that's exclamation mark discard in the chat to get that one. But I'm not going to be doing the AMA on my discard. I'm going to be doing the Ask Me Anything on the Rocket League Reddit discard. Which is the official discord for Rocket League Reddit. It's interesting, Snasky, the only player who dries his hands with a towel between games, I believe. Leftovers never never give up. I don't know how they do it because they're they're like a team of leftover players, literally a team of players who didn't have teams going into RLCS. But their composure and their ability to believe in themselves to make comebacks happen second to none in uh, season three. Perhaps some people, some would say it's a, mis, a misplay for Flipside to win game one because now their backs are less into the corner than they were initially. Of course, I, I'm not serious. Winning game one was always the intention. Yeah, game one went pretty fine for Flipside. Leftovers were trying to frustrate them and not like, give them any opportunities in offense, but they didn't really get baited in by that very often. Which is the risk that Flipside run if they just go all guns blazing. 
against a leftovers defense. From that game one loss, it's greasy. Actually, he's already going to try and get outside, but he couldn't get any sort of contact. Cooks are up high already. That's going to bounce down dangerously. That's a really good dunk by Cooks. A little bit fortunate, though. Has to be said. I mean, Cooks was never really looking for a shot there. He was just looking for an aerial 50 50. So obviously, it bounced in the, the dream location for Cooksar. That was the perfect uh, outcome. But he did well. He was up faster than the defenders, so it wasn't as lucky. As it may seem, he got the outcome that he was hoping for. What up, Cosmic? I forwarded your email to Bad Panda, by the way. You lowered new members to time it to five minutes. That uh, should be fine, Shai. I'm sure people are going to be making accounts in plenty of time. So this is where it really looked like Flipside had just... They were going to do the exact same thing as they did at Season 3. Cucks with a great pass to Greasy. And Siki was unable to get in the way enough. How long are we streaming for? Nah, no road records today, so just gonna stream for another 1 hour and 12 minutes, and then I'm gonna be doing an AMA on the Rocket League Reddit Discord. That's my plan for today. And like I said to everybody who was here at the start of my stream, if I have to run out for 1 minute in the middle of this stream, it's because I have to go and sign for a package that's getting delivered. Hopefully I hear it, I hope I don't miss it. It might, it might be a good idea for me to turn my volume down actually, with that in mind. I don't think I've turned your volume down. Surprising to see Cucks are not going for that ball earlier. He likes to read side bounce, side wall bounces very early. That's how he was able to get the winning goal in the previous game. Solo pair from Snasky that honestly should never work. I'm very surprised to see this go unchallenged, but it looks like Marky just hesitated and drove in a circle. Something that gives uh, Flipside a lot of problems. If we look at why this occurred, why the hesitation happened for Marky, it's partly his fault and then partly just not having an automatic rule of what they're going to do in this situation. So here, Marky comes out, he realizes Snasky's going to beat him to the ball, and now Greasy, who has gone to the ball before Marky, kind of sticks around and they're not sure whose ball this is. Snasky does a really good job hitting it um, not towards Greasy here, because I'm sure he could have quite easily hit this towards Greasy and given Greasy an easy clear. But he just puts it in that awkward space where Greasy can't quite reach it and maybe Greasy called Marky off this and then actually gets nowhere near and Marky in that situation should just say, oh well, I'm going back to the goal because um, if Greasy calls for it and he's missing, I'm probably getting beaten to it. He did not expect, uh, he did not expect Snesky to reach it, but and he maybe thought Cux was behind him as well. But all things considered, I don't think Marky uh, should be sticking around for that ball. If he does turn away from it, challenging is probably, well, challenging late opens up the net. So it's a bit of a risk. Not a great hit by Siki, but also per clear by Cux. Lots of bad hits here, but it turns out well. Marky again downfield. He's been cheating a lot this series. I think Marky was trying to hit Cux with this, but he did put it in a pretty weird spot. Great save by Siki though. Cux did well. Oh, Marky nearly getting a point blank range redirected to the net as well. How do you join the Twitch subs channel in your Discord? You need to link up your Discord account to your Twitch account. Oh. Greasy denied by the woodwork again. But even even though this was still looking very good for Flipside, they had the lion's share of chances this series. Uh, the only goals being great solo efforts from Siki and Snasky. And leftovers are not looking very clean, it has to be said. They really are not looking organized right now. But uh, everything changes, and it changes with a pretty fortune, uh, a good uh, bit of fortune for leftovers, as, we're, as we'll see. It's a good stroke of luck. I believe it's right here. No, not, not quite yet, sorry. I thought the ball was going to come hard down off the ceiling. I don't remember exactly what time it happens, but the tie game is a bit fortunate. So yeah, Flipside continue to do pretty well following up on clear balls that they are making. Marky and this time, or Marky's been doing it all season, all series, sorry. And Greasy right there, just getting a cheeky little knock on. 
VOD reviews have helped my gameplay a lot, surprisingly. Thanks for that. I know you aren't a huge fan of the camera work at RLCS, but what's your take on the bearded schmuck that should probably be replaced by you? Yeah, what, carpet? I think carpet's their best, like, uh, well, I don't think James Watt did any casting this, this RLCS, so I'd say carpet's probably the best talent they've got. He's a, he's a natural, he looks great on camera, great camera presence, great voice when it's not cracking. I, I, I love carpet's casting, personally. I know that, ca uh, personally, like, everybody's gonna have a different opinion on different casters. Oh. Again, that was another good knock-on in the midfield by Flipside. And Cucks are nearly getting a chance, denied by the post yet again. So it, this has definitely been Flipside's game to lose up until this point. Been doing well. Perhaps a little bit of a risky challenge by Greasy there. He was able to get a 50-50, but if you're opting into a 50-50 and a 1v2, that's a bit dangerous. Of course, it was also dangerous to leave the ball, so... It's a situational thing. It looks like a good decision because it worked, but if it didn't work, people would criticize it. Tough position to make the right call for Greasy. Alone at the back. But yeah, for everybody watching at this point, it really did seem like Flipside had it under control, and then I think, yeah, this happens. <laughs> this ball just rolls perfectly down to Siki, who places it very well. That I think it accelerated when Greasy hit it. I'm not sure. Let me take a look at this again. But every contact with the ball, it gives it more speed. And it just flew into the bottom corner. I feel like Marky's positioning is definitely suspect here. Because we see 50-50 with Cuxer. Greasy misses. And Marky's following up on Greasy's hit. He's waiting for Greasy's touch. Hoping that Greasy gets a touch into the middle. You see that autopilot from Marky, he's driven into the corner here. He didn't need to do that, he could have waited in the goal here. And instead he's driven into the corner, driven to the edge of the box, and the ball's in the bottom corner off his own net because of it. So bad positioning by Marky. Greasy whisked with the ball, but uh, as last man, Marky shouldn't be moving up that aggressively, just trusting 100% that Greasy will hit that. Especially when they're already winning the game with 20 seconds left. How's it going? It's going pretty good, Savage Bear. Oh, by the way, it was Buffalo, thanks for the 250 bits, I do appreciate that. Marky was the problem, I mean, flip side altogether, they just weren't um, functioning as a team at RLCS Season 3. Lucas Ray, thanks for the sub, I appreciate that. So I don't know if I shouted out WMDNC1990 earlier, but if you're still here, thanks for subbing eight minutes ago. Bit ambitious for Marky to go up for that aerial with no boost to his name. So now look, Siki's just dealing with everything here. It's just the Siki show in defense, the Snasky and Farah are really not um, contributing as much, but they're, you know, they're doing their jobs. Defensively, it's the Siki show in, uh, in this series. He's, a, he's an absolute monster when he's playing well. Really bad placement of that shot from Cox, giving Siki a free clear. Greasy did move into position, ready to intercept said clear, so a nice job by him. Again, there's such a lack of focus on the backboard here for Flipside. Two times in a row, Cuxer has fired at the crossbar instead of trying to go higher, get it further away from the goalkeepers. Still, Flipside looked like the more threatening of the teams. What a read by Siki. That's so good. Look at the distance he's able to get and the time he's able to win for his team with a pre-jump to read a back wall bounce. Really, really well done. Teams in RLCS got pretty good at the game. Yeah, you're not wrong. RLCS teams did get pretty good at Rocket League. It looks like Greasy might have been boost starved here. We, I would love to see Greasy's boost situation. As you can see there, Greasy's looking for pads. And after back-to-back 50-50 -back losses, he just can't race Farah to the ball. Here. Sorry, I backed it up and it's loading. So yeah, 50-50. Or, sorry, there was one before that. But this is where the problem starts, and this is something that happens for Flipside a lot. This is a really big problem for them, uh, and they're 
pattern for ro- patterns for rotating out of attack. I feel like if this ever happens in 3v3, then two players have messed up. And those two players here are Crux and Greasy, probably, because they were further up the field and now they've just driven back with the ball. And look at the hesitation from Marky because he doesn't want to jump over both of his teammates to go for this. That means they need to try and, make a bit and then Greasy uh, has no boost here because they've all come back the same direction. Or, you know, only one of them can take that corner boost out of all three players and now Greasy's starved. All because of a poor rotation back. We have to go all the way, or back a little bit farther to see it happening. Yeah, Marky gets a good win here. Siki gets a sick read. <laughs> That's incredible. F3, think they're a little complacent, perhaps. So yeah, there Cuxer and Greasy going for the same ball, and now look, oh, sorry. I tried to pause it with spacebar, but I wasn't uh, on the player. So yeah, look at this rotation by Greasy and Cux. They're both running straight back down the line, and I feel like this is where it all goes wrong for them. Somebody should be rotating across the midfield here. Picking up boost pads towards the back post. Not you, you don't even have to go all the way across the midfield to the middle of the field and get the big boost. You just have to grab small pads instead of both going this way because the natural clear is going straight over their heads and that's not where you want to be in, in 3v3. Because this, this happens and now there's a huge traffic jam and no one has boost. Literally no one. Whereas if Greasy had rotated back through the midfield, or Cuxer, one of them. If one of them had rotated through the midfield, they would have had plenty boost to challenge that ball. That Farah just wins cleanly. It's a free ball for Farah because Greasy probably has 12 boost at the most. Yeah, bad defensive rotation or bad, bad retreating patterns. It's something that happens a lot at pro play. I don't know why it's still such a problem for even the best teams in the world. It's not necessarily they're not going on target right now. It's a case of the first shot is doing exactly it's something I think that um, Northern Gaming did particularly well. NRG are also pretty clean with how they retreat. They don't retreat in a group. They don't retreat with the ball. They tend to do. They tend to space themselves out better and arrive in intuitive locations with boost. Not like what we just saw from Flipside. Hey Pluto, how's it going, man? Also, Tommy Spitter, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate that. Let's find the game starting side. I'm gonna constrained time schedule here today. They have definitely been slow going into the land, but if we can see Ziki and Snasty start to wake up, it'll be nasty. But I think NRG's main problem was lack of good competition to practice against throughout the regular season. Hmm, so, well played by Siki, beating players to the ball. Marky could be called into question here because he technically made a challenge from the last man back. Let's go back and watch uh, one more time. Sorry if you guys want to see the, the VOD, but this is how you do reviews. So the biggest problem here for Flipside is that they're not challenging together. So here we see Cucks are moving in to contest this ball, and... Like, there's a, a variety of options. Option number one, Cuxer wins the ball, which is fine for flip side. Option number two, it's a 50-50, which is also pretty okay. Uh, and then option number three, Siki takes Cux out of the game, but probably probably loses control of the ball in the process. And that is where Marky comes in. He should be ready to move in and win possession right after uh, Cux forces Siki, Siki to relinquish it. But... Uh, Siki got pretty much the perfect outcome. His touch was really, really good uh, to take it past Cux because his recovery time was almost zero and the ball didn't go far out of his control. So although Marky's kind of in the vicinity to intercept if Siki did, does a heavy touch, uh, he can't really go for this one. So I feel like in this situation, Marky should have just turned around and let Greasy ambush Siki from behind. This would have probably been a better line of play given how well Siki dribbled Cux. Uh, but Marky goes for the ball as well, which I think is definitely a misplay because no one is ready to challenge behind Marky here. No one is ready. And as you can see, the Siki can just land and then hit the ball before Greasy can even recover. So massive credit to Siki. That first touch to take the ball past Cox was phenomenal. Gave him the ability to recover in an instant and take it past Marky right after. Marky should have seen that good touch from Siki and turned around and let Greasy ambush Siki from behind. 
Uh, he, he probably shouldn't be making that challenge. It's always dangerous to jump up, double jump, or fast aerial for a challenge against someone who's stationed on the wall because they can reach the ball by side flipping, which is much faster. But Siki did so well there, it can't be understated how good that first touch was to take the ball past Cux. Joe Mitz, welcome to the stream by the way, I appreciate the sub. Just to round off my previous thought about challenging, 3v3 is sort of like 2v2 in that regard, that you always want to challenge when you have backup. It's a really bad touch by Marky initially, but whiffs are coming in now from flip side. That could have been a 50 50 for Marky and Farah before that. Greasy whiffing. But I feel like Marky probably didn't want to chip that ball. It would have been better to just take a first touch. Something I wish Marky would do more often, because he used to do it more. He used to just go for dribbling plays in 3v3. But he's kind of gone away from that in favor of um, clearing the ball and going for passing plays, which aren't bad things, but I feel like as one of the strongest ground players in the game, even to this day, he should probably have more of a focus on that. Try and accentuate that strength. Oh dear, this is just very messy from flip side. Everybody wants to get involved in the play, but they're not showing the patience uh, that they need to show. Do I think F3 will do better than XRLCS? Probably, because it's not hard to do better than 5th place uh, for flip side. You feel like there's a fidget spinner under the camera? You're not wrong, there actually is. Uh, there's one... Wait, here. I got two. I got this one, which is just... It doesn't spin very long. And I got this one, which spins for days. There we go. This one just never stops spinning. Sorry to spin the cheers, but who would you rather have to play twos with? Marky on a losing streak or Jacob's left pants pocket? Who would I rather play twos with? Marky on a losing streak or Jacob's left pants pocket? Oh, it's got to be Jacob's left pants pocket. That's a good place to be. Always lots of action in Jacob's left pants pocket. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Another attempted doink redirect, this time Cuxer, but unable to find the goal. Fidget spinner? Guys, fidget spinners are actually so fun. They're good. Good for fidgeters, like me. Buffalo, thanks for the 250 chairs, by the way. And Eric Hanna, 66 for the sub. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate that. Great timing on the clear by Snasky. Look at what it's done to the flip side offense. Marky again playing that disruption role, and it is winning possession pretty consistently for Flipside. But there's been so many whiffs, uncharacteristic whiffs for a Flipside team in a lower bracket of a LAN. They are, but annoying. Well, they're not annoying for people who are using them, they're only annoying for people who aren't using it and watching. It's very bad positioning by Flipside. Great infield pass. Snasky able to score using Flipside's own strategy against them. Or it's not obviously it's not a patented strategy or anything. It's just something that we're most keen to seeing uh, from the F3 boys. But if you go back and watch these vods yourselves, just count how many times uh, Flipside lose pressure or a goal happens where two or even three of them are all in the same position. Snasky nearly on point with that one. It just never looked like uh, this game was going to go in Flipside's favor. They never had a foothold in it. Should do a montage. Thank you, subscribers. Nah. I don't think so. So, yeah, Cuxer, of course, could have scored that. It's a frustrating team to play against are the leftovers. They're so frustrating and Greasy not uh, expecting for a moment that Siki wouldn't boom that ball clear. Backed out of what could have been an aggressive position. I feel like with a minute to go, Greasy should have been posturing for a shot there. Just hope that Siki misses, even though it is so rare for Siki to miss in defense. Siki's just mopping up everything right now. Why is it that they keep missing the ball? They're just nervous and 
Leftovers are a, a tough team. They've beaten Flipside before. They gave them a loss in group stage. Yeah, lots of whiffs from Greasy. It's not a good game for him here. One of his uh, worst LAN appearances today. Vera is going to need to deal with this, but right now this game is completely over. Yeah, Shung is not wrong. This is over. This is going now to game four. Flipside in the worst position ever. When they went to five games against Selfless in the winner bracket, they were 2 1 up before Selfless tied the series. When they went to five games against NRG, they were 2 0 down before they tied the series, and now they're going to have to try and tie the series from behind a second time. Do I think his side men should get more involved in RLCS? I don't know. Don't know what significance that would have for them. Maybe they could enjoy it. It's all about having fun. Coffee or tea? I like both. It looked like business as usual for Flipside. It's a best of five for a reason. Is there Texas speech happening right now? I don't think there is. I don't know why the. Texas speech isn't working today, but I uh, appreciate the resubs, Andy Dandy. Even though it's a two month resub, you've been watching for nine. Oh, that's cool. Appreciate the appreciate you sticking around, man. It's true, Snesky did own goal. Am I an Arsenal supporter? No, I'm not. They almost lost to Selfless and they were able to pull it out. Can they do it again? Yeah, Siki has defended better so far this series than everyone on flip side combined. I think Siki single handedly has made more good defensive plays than the entire flip side roster in the first three games here. Even though flip side have taken a game, they really haven't had to do much uh, good work defensively to take that one game. Something is going very right for that team. So, Flipside. No reason for uh, leftovers not to feel confident in this position. They they know Flipside are not playing well. They're missing the ball a lot, and they're struggling to clear it. Probably the biggest thing that was giving leftovers confidence at this point was that they were just shutting down Flipside's offense so easily, and this is an own goal. Snasky, look, look at him in the bottom right, he's looking around like, what? Because <laughs> he hits the ball, doesn't touch the ceiling, and Marky maybe expected a ceiling hit, but not for the first time this tournament flies under the ball, a really, really bad uh, aerial by Marky. Certainly something he needs to work on. Worst possible way to start, an own goal when you're already down by a game. And Cucks are flying across the box here. I'm not sure about that. Um, it's 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 all well and good to take the ball away from a defender, but you've got to do something good with it as well. Somewhat good. What a save by Siki! He just dive bombed Greasy's point blank range shot. And another another save by Siki. Just no problem. Let me just swat away this. This uh, booming redirect, Siki again. Like, I, I'm gonna highlight all of these Siki clears every single time. You just look at the top left, and it's Siki. He's getting a clear ball, reading all the ceiling bounces like it's no problem at all. It's not just the fact that Siki's saving the ball. Every time he's winning so much time for his team. I feel like playing with Siki must be such a relief because every time you're out of boost, he's going to get a power clear and then you can go find boost. Do I think Flipside would lose even if they didn't own goal? Yeah, probably. They didn't look like they were going to come back this series. It started off well for them because um, they weren't missing the ball and then they started missing the ball. So that was, uh, that was the bad part. Yes, yeah, so he just holding position here. It steals the boost from um, Snasky. Not sure if it would have been secured by Snasky. Two misses in defense from Flipside. It's so strange to see this. And a free goal for Siki as a result. Siki just walks in, takes the ball, 
great first touch, but no challenge for Marky. Greasy and Cux have both just missed the ball. It's the worst I've ever seen Flipside play this one game here. Just a shocking piece of defending there. Like, so many things going wrong. Cooks here. He's got some options downfield to aim for. He's going to try and take it himself. Let's just pass straight. And at this point, it just looked like Flipside lost all confidence. They're just, they, they don't know what to do. They're not trusting each other to hit the ball because they've missed so much. They're moving around so slowly, unsure where they need to be. It's not the Flipside that we're used to seeing who are so aggressive and so confident and uh, who like to bully teams into submission. The thing that really Flipside were so good at for their entire existence in Rocket League was consecutive touches in the ball, or possession, if you will. Probably the one team who were able to hold on to the possession for the longest time and just frustrate the other team, uh, keep on hitting the ball until one time the other team aren't there to get in the way of your shot. But this is just leftovers all over the or they're all over flipside right now they're just playing flipside's game better than flipside in offense uh, they're not missing the ball in defense and they also happen to have Siki, who's playing out of his mind thoroughly deserved lead at this point how do i feel about players changing their car from day to day i feel like it's okay but some players are certainly better with specific cars I don't know why this is uncontested. It wasn't the worst hit by Markey. He got, he didn't get a good clear on the ball, but he did waste time. And there's still, despite all that time of the ball arcing into the air, and despite Snasky centering it slowly, Farah just wins the race to it effortlessly. And it looked like maybe we were going to have a repeat of um, Flipside versus NRG, where Flipside go three down in game five and then they decide to start scoring goals. Finally, Flipside force a miss. They get the unforced error, or the, the forced error, I should say, out of Siki. And they are on the verge of putting out the flip side tactics, but they need Siki to stay high. high Greasy trying to hold on to possession there, but Farah is a very, very good 1v1 player, so it's, on, it's difficult to get the ball past him in a one situation. But all these hits aren't really meaningful for flip side. They're getting touches offensively, but leftovers are happy to just sit back and watch the ball um, remain in an unthreatening position like this. This is not an immediate threat for leftovers. They're just letting the ball come to them. They've got very good patience in defense to the leftovers. Snasky's probably the best um, backboard defender from back in the Supersonic Avengers days. And although a good save from Siki's initial shot, Snasky has so much time to get back because again, flip side, one man alone in defense. Good shot though from Snasky. He does well to get it over Cucks there. And that was game right here. With how the game and the series has been going, it just swung so much into leftovers' favor. Again, with a pretty, it was a sort of fortunate um, equalizer in game two. But it was preventable. Marky did not need to move off his line aggressively and open up that opportunity for Siki to tie the game. And remember, that was Flipside leading with um, 20 seconds to go, and that would have put them two up in the series. So uh, definitely a Flipside series that they should have won, I feel. If they'd gone two up, even leftovers would have struggled, I think, to make the reverse sweep and land situation. But it wasn't meant to be. Flipside threw away game two, and look at Farah. <laughs> Snasky's trying to get his attention. Ferris is completely hyping up the crowd. It's good to see the crowd uh, happy for leftovers. I was worried that they might be hugely dis. I mean, there's a lot of disappointed faces there. <laughs> At least the, there are fans making noise. We are guaranteed new champs. And now the leftovers are going to go on to take on Northern Gaming. It really did feel. The other thing that's worth mentioning here is it did feel like whoever won this game, with how badly Flipside were playing, in particular against leftovers there, and uh, with just how good Northern Gaming were playing, 
Ever since Remco switched back to the Octane, I didn't see anybody beating Northern Gaming, which was the awaiting opponent in the next round. Um, but I thought that that's, that's who was going to knock out Flipside. I did expect Flipside to beat Leftovers, but I did not expect them to beat Northern Gaming in the next round. Le, le, what do you call it? Northern Gaming were just too good in the latter stages of this tournament. I mean, he did what it takes. They have now put an imprint on the world. The leftovers are here to stay. Well, let's get a word from our winners. Snasky is going to be interviewed by Awesome Joey. Over to you. Give it up for these guys. Snasky, of course, everybody well, just hoping he'll take his shirt off here. We're supposed to go? Yes. Oh, well, no, we, we were supposed to lose one more game. Yeah, lose game two. Yeah. Well, Snasky correct there. He was supposed to lose game two to do the reverse sweep, of course. All right, man. We were discussing up there. Your personality started coming out, especially when you scored your goal, where you somehow navigated through the air and managed to get another touch over to put that in. After that point, you had a big smile on your face. It just seemed like a complete turning point. Talk about that. Yeah, it was pretty good after that own goal. Uh, it was kind of <laughs> a sad moment. Uh, yeah, it was pretty nice to score such a, a nice goal in front of this crowd. Uh, I, I tried that. <laughs> you could clearly see They're you guys just talking about his own goal. Immediately. But now, I want to give everybody credit. Obviously, Siki was out of his mind. The save from above, out of nowhere. And then Farah playing a very positionally strong game for you guys. So just talk about your teammates for a sec. I mean, you can kind of forgive Joy here for wanting to touch Snasky. I mean, look at those traps. Look at the shoulders. Like we have been slowly building up throughout these past days, so it's great to see it's all coming together now when it really matters, and uh, I hope we can keep it up in our next game. All right, well, best I don't know what Snasky's talking about all come together. He should really be talking about getting carried by Siki and what that feels like. Do it now. Send it back over to the desk with Axel Toss. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, disappointing that we didn't get to see Snasky take a shirt off in what was inevitably going to be his last interview of the event because they were going to go and lose to Northern Gaming. It didn't matter who was going to play Northern Gaming, I feel, on uh, third day at LAN. They were probably going to lose. Although I, I think Flipside would have had a, had a better chance because they might have uh, you know, been able to scare Northern Gaming a little bit going into this. I'm sure Northern were happy the Leftovers won this. So that was that. That was that one.